Hi everybody, this is Marty Brennan at CGF Architects and I'm going to introduce you to Lark Spectral Lighting which is a collaboration of University of Washington, Dr. Maliki Inanichi and CGF Architects, both myself and Ed Clark. So I'm going to just get us started by going to the Food for Rhino site where you can click the link for Lark. That'll take you to where you can download the project at the bottom of the page, the latest at the top. There's additional information if you follow this link to the University of Washington where there's some information at the bottom of the page just uh, that'll take you to Malika's page and to the ZGF page. At the top you can download the software under downloads. Um, I'm going to show you tutorials in a second but under resources we're going to be populating this with more links with uh, spectral data and different circadian lighting curves and data that is driving LARC. And then under contact us, you can reach out to us uh, through Gmail um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with questions and answers. Okay, so back to tutorials. This is where you're going to want to download the grasshopper definition to get you started. There's a Rhino file that goes with it. And then these three links are spectral data. So this first one, and these are samples that, again, I think we're going to populate with more of a spectral library as we go. But to just get us started today, um, we have this top one, which is going to be a uh, spectral sky definition. The next one's going to be a spectral material definition and then finally a glazing. So if you download those and we go into Grasshopper you are going to want to launch the Rhino file and then follow that up with the Grasshopper the Lark underscore example. You're going to see this kind of overall layout and what you're going to see kind of from left to right is we have prep and that's where we're going to kind of get ready and have uh, uh, I'll just kind of introduce um, where we begin. Uh, we're going to then kind of move into materials and defining spectral materials for radiance. Then we're going to go into simulate and we're going to use Honeybee in this tutorial to use radiance to run our new spectral definitions. And then finally uh, metrics where we'll take our radiance outputs both in luminance and illuminance and we'll look at circadian post-processing, not just photopic, which is typically what we do. So going to prep, um, and, and I might just back up to say, and, and I, I say a little bit here, you don't have to read at this point, but uh, we expect you have some working knowledge with radiance, um, and there's various ways that you can uh, interact with radiance, whether it's using Grasshopper with, say, Diva uh, for Rhino or Honeybee. Certainly Ecotect works and there's many other ways to get in there. Um, this Lark plugin does also expect that you have your environmental variable set up which you can search uh, to how to put C radiance. Um, let's see, I'll just show you really fast but uh, you should have radiance on your C drive right here and if you set your environmental variables to have a path into the bin and lib folders that will uh, make Lark happy. Um, and again, there, there's plenty of links and I'll, I'll post uh, some information how to do that. But so we're under this prep and we just have here, there's four different tools that Lark is gonna uh, give you. So when you download Lark, you're gonna drag and drop the user objects into this canvas or you can put them into the file special folders user objects and you're gonna see these four files that are gonna be populated so if you go to extra and then uh, you should see a little four pack of tools which is Lark and uh, in this intro we just have kind of little explanations for what these are doing so this first one if you hover over them, it's going to tell you what it is. And in this case, it's converting SPDs, which is short for spectral power distribution. And it's going to write a spectral radiance material 
based on spectral data that you feed LARC. Um, if you double click on these uh, components in the center, you're going to see that uh, all the Python is exposed. So you can, by all means, this is open source through the Apache. So you can take this and you can customize it and uh, improve it. Okay, so also if you right click and click help, it's going to give you uh, a list of what it's looking for and what the outputs are. Uh, but on, on, what I'm going to do is just walk you through a workflow in a second, but right now I'll just give you an overall. So this is uh, where we're going to actually feed a SPD input, which is looking for a, column, a text file, and column 1 would be the wavelength um, uh, bin, which I'm going to explain, and column 2 is going to be either transmittance uh, or reflectance, uh, whether based on whether it's glazing or a plastic or metal or other material. So uh, an example of what you would feed that is a, a simple text file that's going to have two columns. The first column is going to be the uh, nanometer of the wavelength. So uh, Radiance is using 380 nanometers to 780 to uh, going from blue to red uh, through the visible light spectrum. And then, so there's different sources of data, uh, spectral data, that are going to give you from 0 to 1, and sometimes from 0 to 100, um, the transmittance or reflectance of that, uh, at, at that wavelength. So in this case, this is a Macbeth 15, which is a known uh, color, a uh, red color, and this is the spectral data that you can download off the web, and then use LARC to create a, a radiance material. Uh, furthermore, when we get into glazing, you can use Optic 6 from LBNL uh, uh, National Labs, and you can download, or I should say, you can build a custom glazing, and then export the spectral data. And so you're going to have a format that looks like this, and LARC will actually skip this header, and it will just look for the first two columns. So here you can see 0.28, that's actually 280 nanometers, and in this case it's in microns. and LARC will convert this to nanometers and it will really just look for the data in those first two columns to create a glazing material. So back to uh, Grasshopper. That's in essence what this tool is doing. Uh, it's also looking for uh, material name, the roughness, specularity. Material type is either zero for glass, one for plastic, or two for sky. The hope is that LARC will will grow and expand and we'll have lights and metals and other materials in here eventually. The channel type, I'm going to explain that in a second, but well, we have either three channels or nine channels. And if I back up here for a second, I might as well explain it. So when you're doing LARC, you have two options. You can kind of take this upper option, which is called three channel, and that's a more can conventional computer graphic workflow where we define materials with an R, G, and a B. So for the visible spectrum, we reduce it to two, three values uh, for red channel, green, and blue channel. So there's pros and cons to that. Certainly, um, a pro is the speed and simplicity. A con would be the fidelity and the precision. So uh, for LARC, we actually have a nine channel option which is more or less the same idea, but we're tripling the fidelity so that now red is going to have three channels and uh, blue and green are going to each have three channels as well. Here's an idea of where we're taking the entire visible spectrum and we're reducing it um, to three channels. So in essence, we're interpolating and averaging in these bins uh, to, to get a single value, zero to one for radiance. Now, uh, LARC is adding this nine channel workflow where you can see that we're taking this bin and we're tripling it and all the way across. So that in, is kind of diagrammatically what we're doing. So um, I guess back down to here, that's channel type. So if you're doing three channel, you set that to zero. If you're doing nine, you set it to one. I did jump over source interval, uh, which depending on the source of data that you got, so if we go back to those text files, um, you can see on this 
uh, for optic 6 if you have an output this is in 5 nanometer so from 0 0.290 to 0.295 is actually a 5 nanometer jump um, and you're going to need to know that if it's a Macbeth information that's also 5 nanometer you can see from 435 to 440 but there's going to be other data sources that might be 10 nanometer and we'll, we'll get, show you that so you'll need to know that and then this Excel Daylight Series Cal is a uh, Excel crack calculator you can download through the Rochester Institute of Technology and that actually allows you to input a CCT for a sky so if you think the sky is or you have a, uh, a meter and, and, uh, and you read that it's um, a 20,000 Kelvin sky you can enter 20,000 uh, 20, Kelvin and this will output a spectral power distribution that then can be converted into a interpolated three channel or nine channel sky definition which brings us into the next component which is the spectral sky component and this is kind of a a next step from if you have this first one that's going to interpolate spectral data there's going to be this output channel output and I should have said that <laughs> this the outputs on this one are going to give you file name paths for a three channel material or three nine channel materials so this would be nine channel A, B, and C but um, this channel output is going to become input uh, for this spectral sky component right here at channel output and if we're this channel type is going to be the same as the other one if it's uh, uh, three channel we use zero nine channel one and then we have a uh, series of uh, additional um, um, bits of information that we're going to need to build a sky so we need to know our latitude longitude UTC a lot of this stuff uh, there's various sources to get this data and we're going to show you using Honeybee how to get that from an EPW file and then um, you can uh, actually input a horizontal direct uh, radiation uh, input or a horizontal diffuse or sorry both um, now if you don't have that data uh, a little harder to get you can actually um, uh, input a global illuminance which you can get from a, a radiance uh, simulation with a CIE sky and we're going to show you how and then you use uh, this run uh, Rendel and Rendel is a uh, exec file in DASIM that's going to output the direct and diffuse components that we're going to need to define our sky and then um, a name uh, if you want to add a name to the sky this component will generate a name automatically based on uh, la uh, well I should say the month day hour and sky type but you can add more information if you know it's a 20,000 Kelvin sky so Rendell is going to have its own output and it's going to parse the tool will parse it into the diffuse and direct and then it will give you the file pass for those sky definitions whether it's just a, th uh, a three channel it'll be this first one and then for nine channel you're going to have three outputs um, so really everything we just talked about was kind of the pre-process using LARC getting ready for a simulation then you would run a simulation using different radiance uh, tools uh, and then we'll want to post-process different metrics so in this case what um, this tool of, uh, which is called uh, I call it three channel metrics we're gonna show you a nine channel next but the three channel you can is denoted by the three dots for an RGB um, uh, kind of conventional simulation workflow and this is where looking for a HDR picture so you would uh, take a, any uh, file path from a picture that you have this one's looking for the irradiance which will be a file path coming out of say a diva uh, for Rhino workflow where you'll have a dot dat file or if you're using say honeybee you'll have a res res file so you'll plug those file paths into there this is a boolean toggle to run pcom which is a radiance uh, tool that's going to post process uh, both the uh, illuminance and luminance um, for circadian as well as photopic and then uh, a directory if you want to tell it where to go 